Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be having a look at the Flutter Tags package. If you want to follow along more slowly or copy some code snippets, have a look at the write of this video on my blog. I will link it in the video description. And now let's get right to it. Also, if you enjoy my content, maybe consider subscribing and liking to help me making more videos just like this one. What does it do? Well, it makes selection of items super easy for the user as well as for the developer. You could also call it a list input widget as you can input many strings at once. How to use it? Well, first create a new Flutter project, the preferred way you like to do it. And add the package to your pubstack.yaml, just like any other package. Then run flutter pub get to download the dependency. Now import it into your current file with this line of code, or just let your RDE slash text editor do it when needed. The widget itself is very customizable, but the core structure is always the same. You first will need a tags widget, which you can place pretty much anywhere you want into the, your widget tree. This will be used as a container for the rows of tags. For the key parameter, just give it a global key with a tags state. You will also need to specify how many item tags you want to display. This is not as difficult as one might think at first, because either you hard code the text and then you already know the amount of tags, or you let the user input them and then you will store them in a list anyway. If you want the user to input a tag, you will need the text field parameter. You can just simply give it a tags text field widget and there you go. You have a text field at the end of all the tags. The last important parameter is the item builder, which takes an anonymous function with an index variable as an argument. The function has to return a widget, but it makes sense to return the item tags widget, as you probably want to display tags. This widget on the other hand takes an index, which we can get as an argument of the function, and a title, which we can get from our current items title attribute of our item list. This works the same for the custom data. There are many more parameters for styling the tags, but there are too many to cover them all in this video. I only want to show three more important parameters of the item tags widget. Onpressed and onLongPressed pretty much do what they say. They fire a callback whenever the, the tag gets tapped or being tapped for an extended period of time. Remove button lets you specify a widget to remove a tag. The package already ships a pre-made button for that, so let's use it. It's called the item tags remove button. Not a fancy name, but it easily lets us specify what should happen when the button is pressed, while it also does all the styling for us. You may ask yourself now, what could I use this package for? I thought of multiple use cases. For example, you can use this as a filter in a search to only filter, for example, for, I don't know, specific categories. And, well, of course, you can use this as tags, for example, when tagging content like YouTube videos, so applying specific categories again, and as a list input widget to let a user input multiple things in general, like a, a list of ingredients for a recipe, etc. All in all, I really like this package because it does a lot of styling for us, so we can concentrate more on implementing functionality. And it also seems really robust, so I think it could be used in many cases. I have not shown all the things this package is capable of, because we do not have time for more this week. So if you have any more questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. And till then, see you next time.